Hello friends and welcome back for another video here on my YouTube channel. This is Cassie. Today I'm going to be making a light up card and this is actually a fairly new product by Pear Blossom Press. This is the Halo Light and it is pretty dang cool, I'm telling you. Um, there's two in a package and we'll talk a little bit more about them later, but I'm going to talk about all the products we're using. I'm also going to be using the Heffy Doodle Fluffy Puffy Unicorn Stamps and Dies along with the Interactively Yours stamp set because this is a light up. I wanted to use a couple of the sentiments from there, but that is good for all interactive cards. We're also going to be using the Bold Banner sentiment and the die that goes with it. We're going to be using some Imperial, or the uh, stitched circle dies, because uh, this just works perfect to cut out the circle that you'll need for your halo. But look through your stash of circles, you probably have something in there. Um, I'm also going to use a couple of them because I want to frame out that circle just a little bit. And then we're also going to be using the Imperial stitched rectangle dies. I'll show you those later. I decide last minute to do that. We're going to be using some alcohol marker friendly cardstock along with some Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper because I want to make my background with some Distress Oxide sprays. I'm just kind of back in love with these. I don't have them all, I have a few, uh, and I would love to grow my collection, but you know, maybe over time. So I've put this into my splatter box. I am shaking my Distress Oxide sprays kind of like a bell, and I'm wiping off the nozzle after I'm done each time, just to ensure that nothing gets clogged. I haven't had an issue yet, but that's what I'm doing. And then we are going to go in rainbow order. So that first color I used was Fired Brick. The next one was Fossilized Amber. This next one is Mermaid Lagoon. And you'll, you can see as they cover over each other, they create new colors. Uh, this last one is Wilted Violet. You'll notice there's a lot of white space in there. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to kind of fix that later. But I am going to hit this with my heat tool first. You'll notice also with Distress Oxides, they start out really vibrant and then they kind of dry back a little bit. It's kind of chalky looking, but I really love that look. Regardless, I still think these colors together are super vibrant and super pretty. So I'm just drying these mostly, I'm not w worrying too much about it, because the next thing I want to do is do a little bit of splatter. I love using these Distress Oxide sprays for that as well. They sit very nicely on top of each other. So you'll notice I also kind of use the top of the cap to get tiny splatters and then I'll also just kind of tap it with my finger and that'll give me bigger splatters and I'm trying to stay within their same colors. So I did the fired brick on top of the fired brick, fossilized amber on top of the fossilized amber and so on and so forth. And now I'm going to pull that out and I'm just going to let that dry on its own. We'll move on to our stamping. You see that tiny chunk of the alcohol marker-friendly cardstock that I have? I definitely keep my chunks of this stuff. This, also my Express It cardstock, all those that I, you know, are typically a little bit more expensive, although I don't believe the alcohol marker-friendly cardstock is that pricey. But it works really well with alcohol markers. So I'm just going to stamp on this little piece. You can't accuse me of being wasteful. <laughs> Uh, especially not here. So I'm just stamping those out with my Ink on 3 Blackout Ink, which is another product that is good for alcohol markers. And I am just strategically putting those on there. You'll notice they didn't stamp perfect. I'll show you that because I didn't use the stamp positioning tool. We don't all have one. Sometimes we just have stamp blocks. So I'll show you how you can fix that. I'm going to pull out a Copic Multiliner. If you don't have something like that, you would want something that is a pigment ink because if you try to use a regular marker, if you use your alcohol markers over the top of that, it will bleed. There's Miles checking out my work. He is such a sweetie. All right, now we'll get to coloring. So typically I like to go lightest to darkest, but in this case, when it comes to my grays, for whatever reason, I will go dark to light. So I started with my T3, and then I'm gonna come in with my T1 and just blend that out just a tiny bit, not too much. And then I'll move on to the hair. I notice that I didn't get her ear, but I will come back in and get her ears in a bit. For the colors I'm using, I'll put those all up on the screen, but I'm sort of going in the rainbow order. So I've got my red, next I'll do my yellow, and then I'll do my blue, but I'm only doing two color blends on these. They're smaller um, images so you wouldn't have to go too crazy you could if you wanted to I've seen some people do some amazing 
color work with two, three, even four colors, even on something so small. But uh, I just haven't really delved into that too much. So for our blues, we have B04 and B06. And then here's where I decide or realize that I hadn't gotten the ear. And I'll come in with some RB02 for the inside of the ear. And then I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir pen that has sparkle. I can't remember the name of it. I'll have try to have it linked down below. But that adds a lot of little sparkle to their her hair. I'm going to pull out the matching dies. And Max now is watching. You know, it's been a hot minute since they have stepped in to see what was going on, especially since we moved. They are usually all over this house now. And then they wear themselves out, so they go lay down. Uh, but they wanted to see what I was doing, which I will take any day of the week. I do think before I finish this card, though, they were off totally snoring in their <laughs> little cubby that I have in my craft room for them. All right, now I'm going to make a little frame. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I am just going to tack down the two of these with a little bit of washi tape, and that'll give me a nice circle frame. And it'll be stitched because this is the stitch circle die. And I have used the stew out of these plates, so I definitely need to replace that bottom plate because, I mean, that tells you just how much I use these. I use these this die machine all the time. And that is the mini die cutting machine by Happy Doodle. So here's where I come in with the Distress Oxide inks themselves to kind of bring those edges, make them a little bit darker, and also fill in some of that white space that I had on the card. I could have done that with the spray, but I didn't want to go too crazy with the spray and then have the colors overpower each other. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And I just, like I said, use the exact same colors that I did in the sprays that I'm using, or that's what I'm using for the inks and sort of blending them together in certain areas, but I like how I've color covered up the white space and then made those edges a little bit darker, and so it's a little bit more vibrant now. I've pulled in that small circle die that I used earlier, and here are those lights. All you have to do is pop them out, and don't be scared. They pop out pretty easily, and it also comes with this little piece of paper, so that way the mechanism isn't lit up all the time. I'm going to hang on to that paper, but that's how easy it is. Now it's a light up. It's ready to go. Easy peasy, right? Okay, so I've decided, and as you can see, that circle works perfect. I've decided this is going to go right kind of in the middle. And I tried to tack it down originally with some washi tape, but then I thought better of it because I do want to save that center. And my die cutting machine, when it when it goes through, it will adhere it to that paper and I didn't want that. So I'm pulling out heffy tape. This stuff is perfect because it will not tear the paper. <laughs> and Max is quite intrigued by it. All right, so we'll run this through our die cutting machine. Now remember, this is Distress Oxide. So whatever plate that those colors are resting on, it will transfer some of that color. So you're gonna wanna make sure either you use some scrap paper or you clean your plate off. See how that color is on that plate? So I'm just gonna clean off that plate and it'll be ready to go for the next time. And here's where I decided to bring in the Imperial Stitched Rectangle Dies. I really wanted to add that stitching to the outside so it would be cohesive with our circle. So I'm gonna tack that down again with some heffy tape, run that through the die cutting machine, and then I'm going to adhere down our little circle that will frame our circle with a little bit of Nuvo Deluxe Liquid Glue. That Originally I was going to stick this just right onto my cardstock, uh, but I decided I couldn't throw out this rectangle, so I'm going to adhere that to the front of my card as well. Because the other bit will be popped up with some foam tape, there will be, it, it'll just look really cool. All right, here's where I'm gonna grab some score tape because I do want to adhere down our halo light to the back of our card or the front of our card base. So I'm just putting tiny little strips of it. You don't need a lot. You just wanna make sure your mechanism isn't gonna move around. So that's why I've done that. And you'll notice I'm using heffy tape at the top. That's just gonna hold it in place. I learned that from Lauren Taylor Made, and I'll have her linked down below because she makes a card using the halo lights also and it is a beautiful card. So you'll want to go check her out as well. But yes, then you can just put that down, pull out your heffy tape, and you're good to go. And here I did keep, like I said, I kept that little piece. It is going to have to go in crooked, but it works fine and still sticks out the side. 
and that way when it goes through the mail it isn't lit up all the time. Now is where I bring in the Interactively Yours stamp set. I'm going to put Pull Me on the edge of that little piece so that the recipient knows to pull that out. And then I'm going to put Press Me on the outside of the card where they would need to press. I change it later because it doesn't really show up very well, but that, I mean, that's what I did. Just put the Press Me there. But like I said, I'll change that later. And then I'm going to glue down the inside circle inside of our halo light. Line up everything again, make sure that it, everything's working. And then my next step is to bring in some foam tape. I'm going to use the Heffy Doodle Deep Foam Tape. It is three millimeters deep. Uh, and if you're going to use just regular scotch like we typically have in our craft room, you're going to need to double it up. But this stuff is great because you don't have to double it up. It works great. Amanda has it in her store. It's also available in the Heffy Doodle store and pl plenty of other places. So I'll have that linked down below. And I'm just going to peel off my release paper so that this will be ready to take the front piece or the, the front panel. But we're all ready. You just want to make sure that it doesn't collapse in so that, that press it's not pressed all in all the time. So then I'll stick that down. And now we're ready to start adhering our little clouds. But here is where I've decided I'm going to put the press me on top of one of the clouds. And then that'll go, it'll just cover up the old one. So I'll use some liquid glue to adhere the rest of my pieces down. This obviously has plenty of dimension at this point. And I did think about popping up my unicorn in the center, but I decide to just have her sticking down just with some glue. She's so cute. I love her a little fluffy and puffy. <laughs> and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to grab out that ink on three ink again with my bold banner sentiment, stamp that down. It didn't do a great job on the A and the Y because I overstamped, but it's okay. I'll fix it later. I run that through my die cutting machine and here's where I fix it. I'm going to pull in some of the essential gel pens. It's the white one. These are from Pear Blossom Press. Amanda has these in her store as well. And so it worked beautifully. I'm going to pull out the silver one and I'm going to just hand draw in some little stars and some dots. You can't really see it right now, but as I move it in the light, you sure can. Because doing this over the of doing this over the top of Distress Oxide inks can kind of be a little touch and go, especially if I had tried to use the white, it would have absorbed that color. So that's why I chose the silver. But you can definitely still see it when I hold it up in the light. And I'll show you here in a second. So now you've got some fun little sparkle on that background. I'll adhere down my sentiment. And then the last thing I need to do is stamp on the inside. So I am going to use all those same Distress Oxide colors that I used previously, and we'll stamp all of our little images on the inside with those. Distress Oxide inks are great for stamping. Um, Distress inks themselves are not actually formulated for stamping, so if you try to stamp with those, it doesn't stamp very well, but these Distress Oxides really do. They have that chalky look to them, which is really cool. It's very different than most of the other inks that are out there. But we'll just use all those colors for all of our clouds. And then our sentiment, we will stamp with the ink on three. And that sentiment's going to come from the fluffy puffy unicorn dies, or dies, the stamps. And it says sending unicorns and rainbows. And then that's going to finish off our card. I love how this turned out. So happy with it. It's going to my niece for her birthday. I hope she loves it as much as I loved making it. If you liked this card, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.